and we are producing this third event for you this year. Uh, we're planning on producing bigger and better every year. This is the first time that we've had it at this location, so we are having a little, it's a beautiful location, but it is a little difficult to find as far as directions and parking. Um, a few things I'm going to start off with right now are the housekeeping, and this is an in informal event. Um, we are a very casual group. There is no um, uh, problems with uh, you casually coming up to people and talking to them about uh, their lectures. In fact, we highly encourage it. The bathrooms are outside here. There are, is coffee and some snacks right here at the, at the front. You're welcome to get up and go and grab things and come back. Um, we will have um, a lunch for people who want to stay here at the facility. It's going to be in this little room right over here we have closed off at the moment. There's sandwiches, chips, cookies, drinks. We do ask for a donation, but if you didn't bring money with you and whatever, nobody's going to be standing at the door to care. We, it, it's more donation than anything. Um, after the conference, we're going to be meeting at Blaze Pizza, which is down at the Dunes area, which is where REI, Starbucks, Was that my magnetic? <laughs> I'm sorry, I did it with my mind. They're trying to stop you. I'm trying to. They, it's, it's, they're, they're trying to. They're trying to mess with the, the metal plates in my head. I needed to wear my aluminum foil hat. Um, I forgot it. Sorry. So there are schedules that we have printed out that are at the desk in the front. If you don't have one, if you want to raise your hand, we'll have somebody come and bring them to you right now. Somebody want to bring one to her right here. So this is our schedule for today. It is loose. Um, we're going to try to be out by five, but uh, we're going to do what we can to uh, try to stay on schedule. We're already behind, but you know, whatever. So um, we have decided we're not going to use Q&A for obvious reasons that will help us stay on time. We have plenty of time for you to be able to spend talking to the speakers so that you should be able to get up and talk to them during breaks, lunch, whatever, um, a costume, wherever, and afterwards at Blaze Pizza or wherever. Oh, I was saying that Blaze Pizza is at the at the next time entrance over. It's the... <laughs> I'll stay really tucked in tight like this. So, uh, um, I will be your MC today, and um, if you want to know more about me, please talk to me about that. Uh, please take all the photos you'd like and post them. We will have those uh, photos out in places where you will be able to see them. This is a free event, but we are accepting donations for obvious reasons. This is an, uh, an outreach to the community. We want to keep it free of charge, especially for people who can't afford an entry fee. But if you can make a donation, it would really help us to defray our costs, which were about $1,200 to put this on. This is not free. And um, we have to pay for it if, you know, if we don't come up with enough donations. If we surpass the amount in excess, it will go to our Skeptic Camp 2018. And if you'd like to write a check and have it as a tax donation, you can make your checks out to HAMBA and have it written on a couple signs. We have a couple free, oh, I think I'm supposed to wave my hand. Um, we do have a homeopathy table over here. I, if you drink it, sorry. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure what medication I have in there right now, but you may end up finding yourself sleepy or malaria or I don't know what it was. <laughs> sorry, sorry. You, you, uh, but this is a monopoly table. We'll be happy to explain it to you. And I want to introduce our planning committee um, so that you can thank them as much as I thank them. There are many people here that are have volunteered in a lot of different ways for this. We really appreciate the help. This is totally a volunteer. Arlen, if you want to stand up. This is Deborah, this is Kathy over here, and Robin in the back, Judge Robin, who found us the location. And uh, Sterling, of course, A.V. And, uh, and Glenn, who's outside waving people to the correct parking spots. We'll mention him when he comes in. Did I forget someone? Okay, that's good. So we do have magazines in the back. These are free of charge. They're supplied by Skeptical Inquirer magazine, which is um, um, I'm a technical consultant for the Center for Inquiry, and um, no, so, yeah. So if you want to pick up the magazines in the back, please do so. Please subscribe to the magazines. And um, we're about to get started. So this event is brought to you because we want to give back to our community. 
The Greater Skeptic World does conferences much bigger than this, year-round, all over the world. And I do speak at several of those events. Um, but I'm not going to be a speaker today. So if you're new to this kind of thing, we want to we want to thank you for coming out, especially people who are on Meetup who don't normally know about these kinds of events. A lot of people in this audience are probably brand new to skepticism. We have a great um, uh, schedule for you today that should help you with when you leave. You should have some great ideas and some some very inspiring talks. I want you to understand that. Skepticism is not a belief system. It is a method of finding evidence. There will be things that are going to happen today that are going to probably challenge your existing beliefs. I'm skeptical about the results here. Yeah, yeah, he's skeptical. So I want you to understand that we are that the speakers and the people that you see are not attacking you personally and your beliefs. They are uh, talking about the evidence and the, uh, you know, the claims that are being made. So this is not a personal thing, though maybe somebody in this audience will feel like we are, you are being attacked personally. I assure you, you are not. It is about a skepticism about a process we go to, go through. Um, and um, just be aware that if you're here at the conference and you want to make a claim that's a little bit out there, Somebody's going to call you on it and ask you for your evidence for that. And that's just how science is done. There's no attacks on people personally, only the claim that's being made. And again, I just want to, uh, read it, re, um, to remind you again that it is a, a method of understanding. It is not a belief. It's how we find out something. The skeptic community wants to support critical thinking and support science and scientific endeavors. So I'm going to show a very quick brief video that is kind of a fun video. This is two minutes long. Oh, this is going to be fun. It's going to be two minutes. Oh, here. here's magazines that are over here that are in the back. Ben Bradford also has uh, books for sale. And I should also mention that the parking, you don't have to get up now and move your cars right now, but the, the facility, we have an agreement with them to uh, park in the second parking lot, the overflow parking up here. And we probably because they're doing some kind of event next door and they're going to need this parking space because that was our agreement with them is to park up to the at the top and this video you're about to see is called uh is a uh, uh british the brits do the comedy the best right so this is a show called the michael and webb mitchell and, mitchell and webb and it's on homeopathy and this is kind of you might even have to see it four or five times to get all the inferences to it, but it's a lot of fun, and it's going to kind of set the tone for the event today. So, it's like two minutes, then we're going to introduce our first speaker. I was going to do interpretive dance, but every time I move my hands, I... Oh, okay, so how do you get the sound? Okay, let's move fast. Pretty solution of article on tennis stack. One part of a million. I'm sure you're serious. You're right. We need to strip those ghosts. One part in ten million. Cheeky one. That we can't handle. Get me some Wolfsbane, also known as Monks over in here. And a whole tray of flower remedies. The shackers are fading. We need some crystals. That's fresh some purple into quartz. Right. Make that aquamarine quartz. <laughs> okay, he's stabilizing. Now, does anybody know what sort of car is it? It means for one day, apparently. Right, get me a bit of blue for one day. Put it in water, shake it, dilute it, shake it again, dilute it again, do some more shaking, dilute it some more, and then put three drops on his tongue. If that doesn't cure him, I don't know what will. <laughs> what is that? Look at this sign. What is it? Tell you, this poor chap's got long to live. Why not? His lifeline. In short. <laughs> his horoscope's not too clever either. It's Sagittarius. Brace yourself for a surprise. Things are going to change for you. So we are listening. Wait. Why? We can try drawing a bit more lifeline on with Byron. It's a different work. You got a better idea? <laughs> Let's see what happens. <laughs> Time of death, 3.34. <laughs> I just can't stand losing them. It happens. I don't know. Sometimes I think a trace solution of deadly nightshade or a statistically negligible quantity of arsenic just...
isn't enough. That's crazy talk, Simon. Okay, so you kill the odd patient with cancer or heart disease, or bronchitis, flu, chickenpox, or measles. But when someone comes in with a vague sense of unease, or a touch of the nerves, or even just more money than sense, and you have a bottle of basically just water in one hand, and a huge invoice in the other. I suppose you're right. Yeah, another drink. My people. Excuse me. Two more homeopathic lockers, please. <laughs> <laughs> they have a whole series. You've got to check them out. They're, they're quite funny. So, um, we're going to bring up our first speaker. The, is the camera rolling, Jay? Yes. It is? Okay. Hi, Susan. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. We have, a whole, we have a YouTube channel, so you might want to check it out. We have videos from our last two conferences, as well as other things. So, I want you to... Um, I want you to uh, realize that uh, there's a lot of things going on in Monterey County Skeptics. So, our first speaker today is, and I'm going to be asking all the speakers their uh, first pet. So, that's kind of like a little thing. I couldn't do the interpretive dance, so we're going to do that. So, our first speaker today is Arvin Grossman, and he wrote the column, What's Your Quotation Quotient? For the Monterey Herald for nine years, he now spends his time traveling the world, spreading peace and critical thinking. He recently visited Cuba in order to prepare for President Obama's visit. He stayed in the same hotel uh, a week before, checking everything out. Arlen was voted by Monterey County skeptics, most likely to visit North Korea, and <laughs> Kim Jong-un to make humanitarian changes in his country. Arlen's first pet was a parakeet named Putty, and he will be talking to us today, twice actually, about misattributed quotes. So, Arlen. Thank you, Susan. Um, yeah, think of me as your kind of warm-up act. I'll get you going, and then, then the real speakers will be up here. Um, but, but my main objective here is to show that uh, famous quotes that you see often are not said by the person who you think said them. And uh, as Susan mentioned, I, I wrote a quotation quiz for <clears throat> the Monterey Herald for nine years. So I've been looking at a lot of quotes, you know, thousands of them. And I've noticed that um, so many of them have been wrongly attributed. So um, you have a lot of famous quotes by uh, Mark Twain, uh, Benjamin Franklin, and Albert Einstein, for example, that were not really said by them. So and I'll give you some examples. But uh, to, just to show, show you what I'm talking about, we have a, <clears throat> a famous quote by Abraham Lincoln who said that, the problem with internet quotes is you can't always depend on their accuracy. <laughs> he said that in 1864, so there you go for an authority. Uh, so my objective today is to provide some examples and give you an opportunity to guess who really said some well-known quotes. And uh, just to complicate matters, uh, some of the quotes were actually said by famous people, so they really weren't wrongly attributed. So, so guessing the least obvious person will not work. Um, so let me start with the first one, and so we might be set up with this remote control. And let's start with the first quote. Yay. We must all hang together, or most assuredly, we will hang separately. So take a look at your guess, your possible guesses here, Benjamin Franklin, Richard Penn, or Edgar Thompson. And I think, let's do it by a show of hands. Uh, how many think Benjamin Franklin actually said that? Okay. How many would guess that Richard Penn said that? Got a few. And how many think Edgar Thompson said it? By the way, I've made up that name. <laughs> um, Actually, it, those of you who said Richard Penn, who was the grandson of William Penn, would be correct. According to Penn Family History and Philadelphia Lore, when told they must all hang together, Richard responded, if you do not, gentlemen, 
I can tell you, you, you will be very apt to hang separately. So it was not Benjamin Franklin, although he would be the person that most people would think said that. Okay, let's, let's go on to the second one. Yay. A woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. I'm sure you, a lot of you have heard that one before. Your choices are Gloria Steinem, Irina Dunn, or Lily Tomlin. So let's see how accurate you are. How many think Gloria Steinem said that? How many think Irina Dunn said it? Okay. Hope you're keeping score, you guys. Uh, and how many think Lily Tomlin might have said that? Well, a lot of people like Lily Tomlin. Um, actually, the person who said it was Irina Dunn, who was an Australian activist. Uh, she was an Australian educator, journalist, and a politician. She coined it in 1970, adapting an aphorism she said she read in a philosophy text while studying at Sydney University. A man needs God like a fish needs a bicycle, was the original quote. Um, okay, very good. We've got a lot of uh, different responses from people. Good. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Your choices are George Santayana, Howard Zinn, or Marshall Kinsey. How many think George Santayana? I think I pronounced that right. Okay, a lot of you. Howard Zinn, a few. Marshall Kinsey, it's another name I made up. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, this one is not misattributed. It's actually, most people know George Santayana said it, and he, he's the one who did say it, in uh, a book of his called The Life of Reason in 1905. So if you guessed him, you are correct. Okay, we'll go on to another one. Oh, you all, you all have heard this one. God helps those who help themselves. And your choices are the Bible, Aesop, or the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, I hope I pronounced that right, too. Um, how many think that uh, it's from the Bible? No, very few, just Susan. <laughs> Aesop. Okay. Bhagavad Gita. Right, a lot of people aren't sure, I could tell. And actually it was Aesop who, uh, five centuries before Christ actually was the one who, the first one to come up with something like that. And um, the actual words were, the gods help them that help themselves. So, okay, let's go on to another one. Those who desire to give up freedom in order to gain security will not have, nor do they deserve, either one. Mm. Choices are Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Paine, or Henry Armiter. Did you mean Henry Armiter? <laughs> <laughs> okay, how many think Benjamin Franklin said that? Commonly uh, thought to be Benjamin Franklin. Thomas Paine? A lot of people. And Henry Arbiter. We just, just made up and nobody's going to choose that one. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, this one is uh, correctly attributed to Benjamin Franklin. Yes. So if you said Benjamin Franklin, you were right. Okay. Next one. Freedom of the press belongs to those who own one. You've never heard that before. Uh, choices are H.L. Memkin, A.J. Liebling, or O.J. Simpson. A lot of people with initials. Um, I wonder how many people are going to guess Simpson. Uh, how many think H.L. Memkin said that? Quite a few. How many think A.J. Liebling said it? A few. And those people, how many, no, we don't know. Uh, a A.J. Liebling is actually the one who said it. He said it in a New York article, New Yorker article in 1916. Oh, so, a few of you got that right. Arlen? Yes. Did you say who that person was that we voted for? Uh, <laughs> only he was a, that he was a journalist. I don't have all that information uh, in front of me. But, uh, sorry, Peter. Uh, okay. 
You can't trust me when over 30. I see a few of you out there who are over 30. Um, so that was either said by Abby Hoffman, Mario Savio, or Jack Weinberg. And how many think Abby Hoffman said that? Okay, a lot of you. Mario Savio, some of you remember him. Or Jack Weinberg, not so many. It actually was Jack Weinberg. Oh, it is. Uh, it's often credited to Abby Hoffman, Jerry Rubin, Mario Savio, etc. But during the protests in 1964, the free speech movement in Berkeley, 24-year-old uh, Jack Weinberg told the San Francisco Chronicle, we have a saying in the movement that you can't trust anybody over 30. So that unknown name is the one who actually came up with that. Okay, next one. You say things and you say, why? But I dream things that never were, and I say, why not? I'm sure a lot of you have heard that one. Um, choices are George Bernard Shaw, Robert F. Kennedy, or Mahatma Gandhi. So, how many would guess George Bernard Shaw? Okay. How many would guess Robert F. Kennedy? Well, we've got quite a divergence of opinion here. How many think Mahatma Gandhi? Oh, about evenly split. And uh, the actual person who said that was George Bernard Shaw. Oh. In a 1963 speech, John Kennedy correctly attributed the words to George Bernard Shaw. They are from uh, Shaw's 1921 play, Back to Methuselah. And Robert F. Kennedy made them the theme of his 1968 campaign but didn't often mention that it was originally said by George Bernard Shaw. So there you go. That one was... And we've got one more here for now. I'm going to come back in the afternoon for a warm-up, too. So if you don't have enough of this, you'll get more. Survival of the fittest. So uh, there's the choices are Charles Darwin, Kenneth Olander, or Herbert Spencer. Um, how many would guess Charles Darwin? Okay, people are hesitant. Kenneth Olander. Oh, another one of my made-up names didn't work. <laughs> Herbert Spencer. Wow. Got, most of you are right on this one. Social philosopher Herbert Spencer, from his book Principles of Biology, condensing the theme of Darwin's theory of evolution. And he actually came up with that in... Darwin said, oh, I like that. So those are my quotes for the morning. I'll come back, like I said, in the afternoon, and uh, we'll get on with the next speaker. Thank you.